Hey everybody and welcome back to Staying Kingdom Minded. My name is Amanda if you are new here and I would love for you to subscribe and join my online Kingdom Minded family. So I'm currently in the midst of trying not to lose my voice but I felt led to share a word from the Lord with you guys today. I really have just lately been hearing the voice of God talk to me and yesterday when I was in the prayer room at church the Lord began to speak some things to my heart and I thought, well, I'm going to make a video and share some of it with you because I really feel like it will be beneficial to your mind to hear some of these words. And then if you know me personally, um, the next sermon I preach will also involve um, some of the reference of what we're going to talk about today. So I heard the voice of God yesterday. I was sitting in the prayer room and I heard just I was having a lot of racing thoughts. And I don't know if you can relate to that, but my mind was just going 100 miles an hour. And um, I began to wonder you know, when you have trouble focusing like that and your mind is just going and going and going, I thought to myself, um, you know, how can I control this? I'm trying to focus on one specific thing right now, but instead of being able to do that in this moment, I, my mind was so torn. And even though from an outsider's perspective, anyone else sitting there in the room, in the prayer room praying, you know, they might would have not known you know, why would they have known what was actually happening in my mind instead of, um, you know, they would just look from the outward man and they would see what they seen, which was my lips moving and, and they might hear me speaking out loud some of the, the words to prayers that I was trying to put together in my mind. And I know that it might sound a little confusing, but if you ever um, have experienced it, then you then you know what I mean. But as my mind began to race, I, I, I said out loud to the Lord, I said, how does a person control this? How does a person, God, what, what do you do when your mind is going a hundred million miles an hour? What do you do with those thoughts when you know you're supposed to be doing this, but your mind is trying to take you in all of these other places. And so I began to ask the Lord and the Lord said to me to push. And I know I've talked about pushing before, right? Push, it stands for pray until something happens. Um, but in the moment, the Lord was trying to impress upon me, which I feel like you need to hear today, is that you may look at a person and we are human beings. So whether we like to admit it or not, we oftentimes judge a book by its cover. So we often look at a person from the outside and we see them going through the motions and we see them clocking in and out of the church building like we are supposed to, right? Um, and we see them maybe living a lifestyle that looks pleasing unto the Lord. And we judge this book by its cover. And so what I want to do is to to start trying to normalize some of the things that is actually happening right before our eyes. But because all we can see is the cover of the book, because we don't have the ability to see the way that God sees. And the Lord began to speak to me and he said, just because it looks one way doesn't mean that it is. Just because you see a person going through the motions of what it appears to be upholding a holy lifestyle doesn't mean that they are. And, and this is not to help you to judge other people. This is to help normalize the fact that many, many Christians today, many God-fearing holiness women and men of God are struggling and fighting battles that you know nothing of. And the importance of the talk today, the importance of sharing what God spoke to me with you is so that you understand that we have to continue to push in the midst of chaos. We have to continue to push even when we don't feel the tangible presence of God. And that is the reason why we sing songs that say, I'm not going to live by what I feel. I'm not going to live by what I see. But see, today I want you to be encouraged by hearing the voice of God through just a willing vessel to say to you that you need to continue to push. You have no idea the power of your stickability. You have no idea the number of people who are watching or walk with God and they're saying she has been through all heck and back, but she continues to push forward anyways. And even though sometimes it may feel like you're just going through the motions and even sometimes you may not feel the goosebumps and you may not feel like you're entering into the presence of God. I want to tell you that lives are changed based on your stickability. Lives and souls are forever changed by the fact that you continue to push and sometimes you feel it and sometimes you don't and sometimes you see it and sometimes you don't. But that my friend is when the word of God says that hope and faith is the evidence of things hoped for, but not seen. So you may not see 
the world of difference that you are making in the lives of those around about you. But I want to encourage you today to know that God spoke to me and he said in the midst of racing thoughts, in the midst of depression, in the midst of the heat of the battle, in the midst of all the things that you are fighting through, that there are lives being forever impacted and souls that will have to spend eternity someplace. And because of your stickability, because of your ability to go even when you don't feel it, because of your ability to push even when you don't feel it, God is going to reward your sacrifice. God is going to elevate you in the kingdom. God is going to do great things through your life and through your ministry because you chose to continue to push. You know, sometimes we pray for things over and over again and we don't see the fruit of our labor. And sometimes it does. It really does just feel like labor. We're come every morning and we knock, knock, knock on the door of heaven and we say, God, I'm laying this individual at your feet that just as I am a couple of, of wonderful people in my life right now and I'm laying them at the feet of Jesus and I'm saying, God, here I am again. God, here I am again. I'm not going to give up until I see. I'm not going to give up until I see you move in this person's life and I just keep knocking and I just keep knocking and I can hear the voice of God say continue to push continue to push because just because you don't see it right now does not mean that it is not on its way your miracle is just on the other side it is just on the other side your answered prayer friend is just on the other side of your sacrifice of your stickability of your ability to be able to push in the presence of adversity. God is saying to you, I want you to normalize the fact that some people are just going through the motion. Some people are not feeling it. And some people are tempted to say, then what is the purpose? What is the purpose of continuing to push? If I don't see the fruit of my labor, if I don't see God answering the prayers, why should I continue to live this consecrated, separated lifestyle? If I can't see God doing anything and it continues to feel as if my life is caving in all around about me and everyone and everything is against me and the enemy is wrecking havoc and my home and my life. I feel like I don't even have a ministry anymore. God sent me to speak, to speak to you today, to encourage you. This too shall pass because he is a faithful God. He is a faithful God continue to lay it all at the feet of Jesus today and rest assured knowing that even though your eyes can't see what other people are going through, they need you. Their souls depend upon you continuing to push into the presence of God even when you don't feel it, friends. Stay kingdom-minded in everything you do and I'll see you for another word from the Lord very soon.